In this example, we're going to try and determine the molecular formula of a particular sample. Uh, notice that uh, we measured the mass of a mole, we know that it was 60 grams, and we also knew the empirical formula of the sample, which is CH2O, which gives us the simplest ratio of the atoms that are, contained, that are contained within the molecule of acetic acid, which is also known as vinegar. And so we have one atom of carbon, one atom of hydrogen, and two atoms of, I mean, one atom of carbon, one atom of oxygen, and two atoms of hydrogen in a particular molecule of acetic acid. So how do we find the molecular formula? Well, what we need to figure out is what is the molecular mass of the empirical portion of the molecule? So if this was the molecule, what would its mass be? Since we know that the molecular mass of carbon, mass of carbon, is equal to about 12 grams, and we know that the molecular mass of hydrogen is about one gram, and the molecular mass of oxygen is about 16 grams, then we can figure out with this kind of ratio, what would the total mass be if this was the formula of the molecule? So using the empirical formula, we're going to figure out the mass of what the molecule would be in mass if it had this formula as a molecular formula. So this is equal to, um, Oh, not equal to, but we want to find the mass, which is equal to one carbon atom, so the mass of one carbon, plus twice the mass of a hydrogen, plus one time the mass of the oxygen. Okay, and since we know the molar mass is there, let's go ahead and plug that in. So the uh, molar mass of carbon would be 12 grams, plus two times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is one gram, and let's put parentheses around that to kind of separate those, plus the mass of an oxygen, which would be 16 grams. And notice when we all add all that together, we get 12 plus 16 is 28, plus 2 times 1 is 30, 30 grams. So if this was the molecular formula, then we would have a mass of 30 grams per mole. But since in our sample, we end up with 60 grams per mole, which is twice as much, we then realize that the molecular formula versus the empirical formula has a 2 to 1 ratio. With the molecular formula, we get 60 grams per mole. With the empirical formula, we get 30 grams per mole. So you can see the 2 to 1 ratio. So which means that to find the molecular formula, we take the empirical formula mass and multiply it times the ratio of 60 grams over 30 grams, which is the same as this is equal to the empirical formula times the ratio of 2 to 1. So what was the empirical formula? Well, it was... CH2O, and of course we're now going to multiply that times the ratio of 2 to 1, which means we have twice as many of each element in our molecule, which means we have two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens, and this is the molecular formula of acetic acid. All right, now again, to summarize, if this is the mass of a mole, and we find the mass of the empirical formula mole, for example, if the molecule was actually made up like this, and we find its molar mass, we then simply find the ratio of the ratio is 2 to 1. We multiply this by 2 to get the actual uh, molecular formula. If the ratio was 3 to 1, we would take this and multiply times 3, or 4 to 1, we would multiply that times 4. So you find the ratio of the number of atoms in each molecule uh, on the empirical formula and the ratio of the number of molecules, uh, atoms that you have found in each molecule for the molecular formula, you find that ratio simply by finding the ratio of the respective molecular or molar masses. And that is how you do that problem.